Asia, the largest continent in the world, home to 48 countries, more than half the people on the planet. And hey, they've all got to eat. What they're eating has taken center stage over the past few decades, with the rise of travel shows such as Anthony Bourdain, No Reservations, which have further expanded the Western palate. Diners are more adventurous these days than they used to be and willing to try things they're less familiar with. That's certainly true in Greater Boston, where diners are munching, sipping, and slurping their way through authentic regional Asian cuisine. Tonight, Chronicle is dining around the world. East and Southeast Asian edition. This is Chronicle on WCVB Channel 5. Whether it's Porter Square Ramen or Torch Salmon Belly in Somerville, for the past 10 years, Rachel Lee Blumenthal has been on the foodie front lines, writing for the website Eater and Boston Magazine about what's new and delicious around town. The Asian food scene in Boston is incredible. I mean, there are so many different countries and cuisines within those countries covered. It also seems like the palate of the Boston New England diner has changed a lot over the years. In the past, when Asian fusion was a phrase people were using, it meant that the restaurant was you know, fusing multiple cuisines together into one dish. But what's been really exciting over the last few years is more regional specificity. One region of interest to Blumenthal is Thailand, which is why she recommends our first stop, Mahanayam in Brookline. It's a lot of dishes that you won't see on menus elsewhere in town. It feels like it's a night on the town in Bangkok. What's the overall concept of the restaurant? Our concept is just like uh, Lan Lao. Lan Lao is just the Thai word. It means like the place that Thai people usually go for hang out, eat and drink with friends. Co-owner Samuch Saikam Tan opened the restaurant in 2020 with childhood friend and resident mixologist Sampan Bunak hoping to eliminate the gap between native Thai and American Thai cuisine. Some Thai restaurants have like two menus like for Thai mm. and for American people. You're trying to bring them together. It's not bringing it together, it's just want to have only one. No matter you are Thai or you are American, so you get the same thing. The owners fearlessly present the flavors they grew up on in dishes like yum yum, that's fried shrimp, toasted coconut, cashew, and a Thai fruit called rambutan. This is a crab curry. We call it gangpu in Thai, made from our own curry paste. The crab lumps in there, beautiful. Wow. That is really delicious. Outside, the weather darkens with rain and thunder. Inside, we find comfort in a signature cocktail with flavors hand-picked to complement the meal. <laughs> Even the gods approve. <laughs> in 2008, Chronicle's Mary Richardson visited Joma, New England's first Burmese restaurant. It is so good. Yeah. The restaurant still sits at the same Alston location, still features authentic Burmese cuisine from Chef Sai and his wife, Thotter Jaw. But Joma has enjoyed a recent interior makeover, now paying tribute to the process of harvesting the restaurant's signature ingredient, tea. You pick the tea and I put it in the bag. Like this. Chef Jaw has a long history with tea. I was born in a tea garden. One of our customers, he, he drove by from the cake up to here 45 minutes, only come to have a, a one tea salad and one cup of tea. Tea that, once fermented, is literally good enough to eat in Joma's top-selling Burmese tea salad. After fermentation, we make it dressing as uh, lemon juice, olive oil, fresh garlic a little bit, and then pour on the green and the tomatoes and a little bit of onion, mix it with the tea, and then top it with the crunchy beans and nuts. This recipe hasn't changed since Mary's 2008 visit. Unfortunately, neither has the turmoil in the couple's home country, renamed Myanmar by the military regime, which forced Sai and his wife to flee in the late 1980s. I'm like a freedom fighter. At that time, you know, I tried to do you know, protesting. They just shoot us. You know? So I came here as a refugee in 1993. After a period of reform, the country once again finds itself in turmoil and with refugees competing for international aid amid global conflict. 
The Jaws, meanwhile, continue to draw attention to their home through food. If you want peace, just eat the food together. They don't have a voice over there, so we had to speak loudly for them. In 2008, it was this pumpkin shrimp dish that caught Mary's attention. This is the best vegetable I've ever had in my life, and I'm not kidding. After she came, and the next day, people just lined up in outside for the pumpkin shrimp. A lot of people showed up, so thank you, Mary. Rest in peace, you know? Yeah, we miss her. Mm, such a sweet tribute to Mary, who, of course, always had excellent taste as well. <laughs> she sure did. All right. <laughs> and if you want to try to make your own Burmese tea salad, Joma packages and sells tea fermented, fermented tea, both in the restaurant and online to consumers around the world, including Myanmar. Right, and it might seem strange that people there would import a product that's actually grown in their own country, but Chef Sai says the fact that it's actually packaged here in America yeah. is a selling point over there, so they actually do quite well. That's awesome. All right.